Pain is so common, you know, it's one of the first things you learn about in life. And it's very complex in that it's truly a mind-body phenomenon. And yet, we are inadequate in the education that we give all health professionals, not just physicians. The pain education gap exists because pain is part of every clinical discipline, but it's not the primary part of any, so it becomes an orphan. And we need to change that. It is possible for clinicians, even though it doesn't have a molecular weight, it doesn't have a um, MRI footprint, it is very possible to understand pain well enough to be able to effectively treat it. UC Davis has really been sort of a leader um, in looking at this education component. And so we wanted to train pretty much all of the primary care providers in the state of California and beyond. At UC Davis, the competencies for pain management were designed and fostered here. These are the actual fundamental principles of what's required to teach about pain in, at medical school curricula. We use that at that stage. That will take several years to build that curricula, but we're already seeing the fruits of teaching people early. Now we're left with the workforce that never received that education. The first pathway that we we had for reaching them was something called Project ECHO, which is a well-known system of telementoring, where we reach out to clinicians who can't get pain specialists to see their patients and help teach them how to do it. P3 evolved out of that to become a way to train, a, train the trainer, which is the Primary Care Pain Management Fellowship, was to train at least one or two people from a health system a little bit higher up than maybe um, on the floor all the time that would say, I want us to know this in our health center. I want to go and learn. I will come back and teach my peers. And then we will also look at how we can change some of our systems, procedures and protocols in order to influence the way we're doing pain management with our population. And it does so with a couple critical educational strategies. Those are working with a mentor directly actually having abilities to phone a friend. When I have a difficulty, I can talk to someone that has experience. Three, the actual didactic type of education, which is actually preformed material, videotaped material, and other materials provided to the learner. And then actual dynamic learning sessions done by teleeducation. I really wanted to take this uh, fellowship because I really want to have all the tools that I could possibly have so I can present those to my patients and I can feel like I'm being the best provider I possibly can be. Everybody has heard of individuals having back pain, for example. Well, is it, you know, a set, you know, arthropathy? Is there any radiculopathy? And, and if so, why? And, you know, uh, and being a little bit better in regards to like, you know, a clearer diagnosis and therefore a better treatment plan. I think as a T3 fellow, I think I am a more effective provider, um, but then also a more effective teacher. I want to be that person who cautiously um, and with full knowledge treats people for their pain as well as support them in other areas of their lives and in their health. Pain management and how we've managed pain over the years has, with the opioid crisis, become a public health crisis. The only way we can do this is to help providers help their patients who help their families and who help their community. It's really a force multiplier to educate as many people as possible, high yield information, and, uh, and to do it at a short period of time of complex material. It's an impactful project, but it needs to scale much larger to have the impact that it can have um, regionally and nationally. For me, I have pride in the fact that this program could help millions of clinicians re release them from the reliance they might have on opioids and, and allow them to only use opioids when the benefits outweigh the risks. Um, and this is an avenue that it's actually been hard to get a partnership on because it's so compelling to just address the opioid as opposed to that fundamental problem. So um, I'm proud that we at UC Davis have been able to lead the way, but it's not without having partners all over the United States and all over the world, and particularly partners like the IASP.